Yes. When you see the hijab at the at the uh, women's march and all that, it, and knowing what you came from, it must absolutely enrage you. Oh, it's very sad. It saddens me because when I see what the American public is trying to sell our daughters and our future generations as acceptable without recognizing the ramification of it, because Americans are not seeing the ramification. When you start seeing hijab popping into a community, that's a sign of radicalization. That's not a sign of progressiveness. It's a sign of going <laughs> backward. That's actually the first sign of a radicalization of a community because that means they're becoming more devout, more following uh, the Quran to the letter, oppressing women. A woman in a hijab means you are shameful to look at, you are dirty to look at, therefore you need to be covered because you are a walking sin. So if I am tempted to look at you or to rape you, you made me rape you because you made me see your ankle because it flashed a little bit under the hijab and therefore you deserve to be raped or you deserve to be beaten or you deserve to be abused. What message are we sending our daughters? Yeah. According to Islam, the God recommended hijab for those women who are modest and pious at heart, so that the people in the society know them as modest and pious. Hijab is a sign of modesty and piousness, which dictates that women with hijab do not enjoy displaying their beauty to all, and they do not want to be known to all as hot and sexy. They are not open for flirting or axing out for a date. Their beauty, charm, appealingness, etc. are preserved for their selected special one. It is a lifestyle, and believing women feel dignified in hijab as it empowers them, gives them authority and control over the viewership of their beauty. And women who follow this lifestyle feels insulted, disrespected, and undignified when their hijab is questioned. Hijab cannot be imposed on anyone, because if hijab is forced or imposed on anyone, then that hijab will be deceptive and hypocritical. And that person may end up doing things which may bring shame on this holy dress code. Hijab has to come from within, with integrity and understanding. And the God knows what people have in their heart. If someone is not modest and pious inside, their hijab of outside is meaningless. You see, one day, I was invited to a Christian school to speak, and it was a girl's school. So I went to speak to them and the first question they told me is why do you have a beard? Why do you have a beard? So I said, what do you mean? They said, no, these are Talibans. Talibans. So Allah put it in my mind. This was a pure Christian school. You know, they had uh, idols that they have, little pictures and portraits and so on. I said, you know, to be very honest with you, we follow the prophets. And you know, I don't want to use the Prophet Muhammad's example because you don't believe in him. We are talking now to Christians. But I want to tell you, when I walk in the streets of Harare, Harare is the capital of Zimbabwe, where I come from. When I walk in the streets of Harare, the small boys, they say, Jesu. You know what is Jesu? Jesus. Says, there is Jesus walking. Mm -hmm. But when they see your priest, they don't say that. Mm -hmm. Are you following what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. When they see your priest, they don't say, there is Jesus walking. I said, but why? The reason is, we follow Jesus as well. I did not see Jesus without a beard. Anyway, I saw him with robe, and you drew the picture. I don't even believe that that is the proper picture, because we are not allowed to make those pictures. But you drew the picture, according to your picture, I, am, I have got a beard. I look closer to him than any one of you. <laughs> so they were quiet. So one other girl thought she was clever. So she said, but what about your women? Why are they also covered? You cover them. You know, this question comes up all the time. So I said, because we follow the mother Mary. Finished. <laughs> closed. <laughs> Topic closed. <laughs> Topic closed. Our women are closer dressed to what Christianity teaches than the Christians themselves. We are purer in Christianity than the Christians themselves because look at the dress code, look at the morals, look at the conducts, look at how strictly we follow the Ten Commandments, look at how we would like to you know stop certain things from happening and so on and every little while they find it creeping in. The church sometimes will allow homosexuality, they will allow, it changes, they change it in order to get more people to follow. With us, even if no one is following, the deen will remain. And still there will be people who will follow. So let us remember, when you want to think of answers and when you have discussed, you will have the answers. 
Now to cover yourself, how can that be oppression? Because today I am covered. If in 50 years from now, they might tell the men that if you don't move with shorts, you are oppressed. Then what are we going to do? All of us are going to move in shorts. Allahu Akbar. You, can you imagine myself and everyone else here sitting here in shorts, one short only like this. They say, no, if you don't wear shorts, you are oppressed. So the sisters who are seated here, some of them are fully covered. Some of them have their faces open. Nobody has forced them to do that. It is their own will. They are Muslim. They are surrendering to Allah. So we believe that in the same way, you see, sometimes people say it is oppression to cover. Why are you covering? I have had questions regarding my own family where people say, why do you force your family to cover? And I tell them, you ask them. Did I force them? I didn't force them. No, no, it's oppression. So I'm oppressed. You know, yesterday I was in Colombo. And I gave this example and I want to give it to you. It's a very good example. I was one day sitting in an aircraft a few years ago. There was a man who sat next to me. And he looked at me. He doesn't know me. He doesn't know anything about me. And he told me, you people oppress your, your, your women. To start with, no, hello, no, how are you? No, good morning, nothing. You people oppress your women. So I looked at him and I said, Ya Allah, what should I tell this man? He wants to fight. You see, he wants to fight. He wants to argue and debate. So I can't talk to him on normal terms because he didn't talk to me on normal terms. So he was with his wallet looking at something. You know the wallet where the money is? He was looking at something. So I looked at him I said, You are oppressing your money. <laughs> <laughs> he told me, What do you mean? I said, The same thing you mean that we oppress our women. So he said, why? I said, because you are covering your money. <laughs> your money is covered. Everything is covered inside there. Can you see? He said, no, but this is because it's money. It's valuable. I said, our women are also valuable. <laughs> they are valuable. So sometimes when you talk to someone who is foolish, you need to give them a foolish answer also. <laughs> foolish. They don't understand. Then he was quiet. He just did <laughs> And he was quiet. He didn't. There was no other answer. So the thing is, we believe and you know if you study you will find today divorce is very high across the globe and today problems have increased marital problem today people are interested may Allah protect us we are in a Muslim country we are happy and we are we thank Allah but some other places in the world men are interested in men and women are interested in women you know what I'm talking about now in some countries some of the most developed countries I was reading an article recently there are some people fighting Listen to how people are taking hum not only religion away from us, but they are taking our brain away from us. There are some people in developed countries who are fighting to say we are free to marry our dogs. Wallahi. Wallahi. They are saying, why is it if, if, you are, if a man is free to marry a man, why can't a man and a woman be free to marry the dog? What is wrong? We are free. Do what you want. They are fighting it. That is how the issue of homosexuality started many, many years ago in the same way where people said we are free, we are free until they convinced some people that we are free and they started. So now they started the other ball rolling. Very soon they will allow it. Astaghfirullah. May Allah protect us. So if you take a look at the Islamic ruling of covering, when a person, when there are women all over who are not covered, you have some, they might be more beautiful than others. And you have some, you know, maybe their character is not good. And so they're all different types. Like if you have a motor vehicle, say for example, you have your motorbike. I notice, mashallah, here most people have motorbike. When you have buy a motorbike and you are riding it, you are very happy because it's brand new, isn't it? But after some time you saw another motorbike, you say, oh, that one is better. I will get that one, inshallah. And then, and then you continue. After some time you change your motorbike, you get a better motorbike because you saw it. If you did not see that other motorbike, forever you were going to believe yours is the best. Wallahi. Look, you have a phone. If you have iPhone 4S, it's the latest, isn't it? So if you have iPhone 4S, you are very happy, you are excited, you keep in your pocket, you know, you talk. There is a, something called Siri, you talk and you see and how it works and everything. You are very excited. But when you see iPhone 5, you, you say, oh, now mine is not latest. But if you did not see iPhone 5, up to when you die, your iPhone 4S is the best. Do you agree with me? Yeah. There you are. 
So Islam says, your wife, when you got married, you are so happy. She's your bride. You had big function. You had such a nice place. Father of the bride came. You came. Everyone came. So when she is yours, you lower your gaze. You did not see another model. So you are very happy until the day you die. You think this is your best finished. Subhanallah. But when you are looking here, looking there, and they are exposed, someone shows you hand, someone shows you leg, what happens? Your model now, you are not happy anymore. So divorce, I want another one. You see? And this is why it's happening on the globe. So Allah says, put nice clothing, so your beauty is covered, so it is appreciated. Other men, they will, they will look down, women must look down. And the issue of lowering gaze is not only for women, both for women and for men. Lower your gaze. You don't have to stay someone, look them up, down, up, down. No. In Islam, we don't do that. So people say, no, you are free. Wallahi, now, there, there are laws which in some countries they are saying, when you stay at someone, it can be called sexual harassment. So they want to jail you for looking. They want to jail you for looking. Islam from long has told us that be respectful. What is wrong? Now they are telling us, no, Islam is barbaric. How can they say that you are not allowed to look? But themselves they are saying that if you're looking at me too much, you are being very, very, uh, you, you know, you are being abusive. Sexual abuse. May Allah protect us. So we need to know the issue of dress code. We can answer them with logic, not with religion. Put religion on one side. We talk with logic to say, look, if you have someone, like I said a few days ago also in one of my talks, that you see the hair of a woman, when, when no woman's hair is showing, when someone gets married, that hair is so valuable, it attracts him, he looks at it, he appreciates it, he, and so on. But when everyone's hair is open, one uses head and shoulders, the other one uses pantene, the other one uses this, you know, uh, palm olive, and someone uses different thing. One hair is flying this side, one hair is flying that side. So what you have, you can't appreciate it. Because if you see your wife's hair, you say, no man, but that other one I saw was better than this. So you're not happy. So the best solution is just cover yourself. And the best solution is lower your gaze. And this is why we believe firmly you need to work hard to be happy with what you have. Islam teaches us contentment. Be happy with what you have. Because wallahi, if you are not happy with what you have, your race will only end when you die. You will keep on running. Someone, for example, they have a nice cell phone, a mobile phone. It's okay. Every time latest one comes, you want it, you want it, you want it, you want When will it stop? When you die, it stops. You see? If you follow what is latest, but if you have this phone, it is fulfilling your purpose. You need it maybe for email, for SMS, you need it for this, for that. Whatever your purpose is, it is fulfilling. Stay with it. When you need to change, because it is something material, when you need to change it for some reason, if you can afford it, then you change. Many people, they live beyond their financial means. Why? Because they want to follow what they see in the television. Oh, I need that phone. I, if there were no adverts today, we would all be very happy, more happy than what we are. Because an advert, what does it do to you? It shows you something which you don't have in such a way that you want it. So sometimes your money you are saving, saving, saving to buy a house. But instead of buying your house, you saw something else, you took some money from there and bought it. But that was not necessary. Why? You saw the advert. Better you didn't see the adverts. Allahu Akbar. So I hope I have explained the issue of the dress code of women from a logical point of view to say when something is covered, even from a more logical point of view, it is more respectful. I tell you, if there are two sisters walking down the street, one has a mini skirt and you know showing the chest and showing her hair and here is short blouse and the other one is fully covered. Young boys, who are they going to whistle at? <laughs> who are they going to do that to? They will trouble. Hey, <clears throat> Who are? They will come hoot, make noise. With who? This one or that one? The one who is not dressed properly. One who is dressed properly, they won't try it, all that tricks. So all the people, they are either my sister, my daughter, my wife or my mother. Your sister, your daughter, your wife or your mother. Or someone related to you. So in the same way, you don't want someone to play and tamper with your sister, your wife, your mother and so on. You would not like also to do the same with somebody else's sister or wife or daughter or mother. Very important for us to know. Like I said, there are rules. What you like for yourself, you don't bump into somebody else. I want to do to someone else, but I don't want them to do to my family. How? We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us protection. 
this issue of you know women wearing jeans and t-shirts and so on and taking out their or showing their hair it only started a few decades ago before that in the whole world it was not there you know the victorian era in europe the women used to wear long dresses right now 1950s long dresses to the bottom never showing their legs they not even showing part of their legs and they used to wear a big hat like this with a net the hat used to have a net around it they used to wear that up to recently and only now a few decades it started so we we still want to preserve our way and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness we don't trample on other people's feet and we hope that they don't trample on our feet in the same way that the 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 secular world considers it oppression yes the secular world considers it oppression to force someone to wear hijab we say it is oppression to force someone to remove hijab same thing so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors with this i end saying jazakumullahu khaira wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh like, share, and subscribe to create awareness. We are also available on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and PalTalk.